My name is Stella Lupuschor. I um, come from a math and computer science background, although now it's called analytics. Um, I have uh, run the analytics function uh, at Fidelity TIAA. Before then, I ran the social analytics function at IBM. The story that um, David was alluding earlier about social analytics development at IBM, that was my baby. Um, uh, I have three babies too, um, 12, 18, and 23, and they are my future of work. They are teaching me what it means to be uh, a patient human being and what it means to um, worry about the skills that they will need to acquire over time and how newer generations behave, uh, thinks, and um, aspires to be included. Um, I love to travel and I love to pay attention to everything that is happening um, around us, around the world, because it makes me better informed about um, how I can help my children grow. So two years ago, I left the corporate world and I started the company to framework because a lot of things that I do is looking at where the signals are coming that will inform what changes are gonna happen and how we need to prepare for that. In some cases, that's analysis. In some cases, that's different technology um, solutions that are coming. In some cases, it's just changing in human behavior. Um, so I, I started a company called the Framework, and then I said, how do I name myself? What title do I give myself? <laughs> I started looking, you know, CEOs and founder and uh, president, none of that fit. It's like, why don't I have a little bit of humor? So I will um, name myself Chief Reframer. And I updated my LinkedIn, and two days later, I got a request for friend uh, <laughs> from Adam Munoz, who is in framing business, as in Windows framing, right? That's when I knew I found my tribe. Now I belong somewhere. So diversity and inclusion. And by the way, nobody told you, but this is going to be a working session. I'm not going to do the work here. It's going to be a conversation, and active participation is strongly encouraged. So who has a diversity and inclusion strategy? Chief diversity and inclusion officer? Manager, leader, somebody who has that accountability, developer. And what typically you look at and pay attention when it comes to diversity and inclusion? What are the categories? Representation. Representation. Say more. Segments. Uh, ensuring that your employee population reflects the workforce supply. Yep. And what are some of those um, categories that you look at? Uh, gender and race within the United States. Okay. Gender, race. Yep. Anybody else? Age. age. Say more about age. Uh, alignment of behavior and personality to our overall employer brand. Right. So the personality and behavior of employees <coughs> and linkage to the employment brand because they go and communicate what it's like to work at your company and that yeah. attracts or prevents. Yeah, as a company we believe in the real. So those are diversity components. What about inclusion? Because after all, those usually come together, right, all the time. I love that. And, you know, 21 hours is spent weekly by millennials nowadays to care for uh, elderly or for disabled parents. That's a big investment. And it's great that you have that type of uh, focus on this group. And it differs. Right, what you measure and look at diversity components and the representation is different than what inclusion means. So over the next 20 minutes, 25 minutes, we will unfold and unpack this further. But before we go in, I need an expert committee of people who can speak for some of these segments. So let's say, who wants to speak for age? You're gonna be the age? Okay. What about um, gender? You want to be the gender? Male, female, both? Both. Both. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> Who wants to do the, uh, represent the Latina race? Okay. Who wants to represent, what else do we measure in uh, diversity? LGBT, you. Awesome. Any other categories that we want to measure or have a representation of? Are you thinking about personal strength? Like personal strength. Yeah. You're stealing my thunder. I was planning to go there and you were ahead of time, which is absolutely the right conversation. Because when we start selecting different dimensions, we put a person in a bucket. And then we make so many decisions about that bucket, as opposed to saying, we're so much more complicated. So let's, let's look at other dimensions that we didn't look at. And then if any of those resonate, just make the noise, if you feel that you, you belong to that category too. So child one, one you said is behaviors, right? Who doesn't have complexity in their behavior? <laughs> and if you do, make this noise. You'll learn it, we'll get into the routine. It's easy. You don't have behavioral nuances and complexities? You do, okay. What are the other things? Divorced people. They have different needs, right? People with two children. With three children. With not children. What about with adopted children? Just having children alone, I think it gives you a very different degree of complexity that you need to deal with, as well as the policies and programs the workplace needs to support you with. What about age, older age, over 55, let's say? We don't have that many. I affiliate with that, although I'm not 55 yet. <laughs> um, and funny things happen to your body as you get older, right? Your eyesight goes, although that happens at the earlier age too. Sometimes your hearing, most of the time, many times, your hearing goes as well. You may need physical accommodations. You may not be as fast. And how we design the workplace when we say, you know, let's, let's create a physical environment that is open space. It gets very, very uncomfortable sometimes to work, especially if you, if you get older, because you, it's, it's much more difficult to discern the signal from the noise, and it's not a hearing problem, it's actually uh, how your brain processes information. It is much more difficult to um, uh, deal with um, open space environment. You need a lot more physical space to be able to focus. So again, a lot of things about the dimensions that we deal with in the workplace are not accounted for. How about other segments? Do you, do you want to think of any other segments that we didn't talk about? What about just newcomers? Newcomers, Designer. yeah. They have no clue what your company is really. They just saw the marketing campaign and they said yes, and now they have to go through the honeymoon and everything else that they have to go through to get to know and integrate and build a community. And they need that sense of belonging. They need to find their tribe and to establish themselves. Any other segments? Yeah. Exactly. And a lot of disabilities are not visible. And a lot of times people choose not to disclose them. They feel they have a stigma. So again, diversity is is great and you can measure it, but when it comes to inclusion, it requires a very different thinking and different um, practices that in the workplace are not needed to be implemented. Okay. So we talked about diversity, we talked about inclusion, we talked about different segments. At the end of the day, inclusion is personal, right? It's experienced in the context of the individual and how they were raised, how they were brought up, the experiences along the life that they had. And um, the next segment what I want to do is work with you on um, reframing some of the concepts of inclusion and then hopefully some of this will be 
um, easy to bring it back to the workplace and consider every single time you make a decision. So let me give you an example from um, my life. I work in m m many countries, and uh, one of my last experiences was working in Moscow office. I was I moved from Moldova to Moscow, and I moved with my husband, and the two of us um, were offered salaries, and you know, in, in Soviet Union and in, in former Soviet Union, we disclosed all the everybody knew how much everybody else makes. So I was making two thousand dollars, and my husband for the same role, same team. 2200. What's interesting, there was another friend of ours who moved from Moldova who was earning 4200. So the sum of total of us. So as any logical person, I went to the HR and I said, can, can we have a conversation about this? What is going on here between you know me and my husband, first of all? And she said, look, you're a woman. And Traditionally, for, for the band level that you're in, we have for women lower salary level. So I said, okay, fine. What about comparing to our friend? And the answer was, look, he's, he's um, the only income earner. There are two of you making the same amount of money. So for the family, you, you both earn the same. He has a stay-at-home wife who he needs to care for. So what happened <laughs> in that moment, I made decisions. And we all do when things like that happen to us, right? We make decisions. I made a decision that as a woman, I'm not worthy more. So I should expect to earn less than men for the rest of my life. At least in that moment, my perception was that. Number two, um, it is really much more complicated than you know, paying you for what you're worth and your skills. And number three, that I'm an immigrant, because when I said, look, I, I don't think this is fair, she said, well, go back to Moldova, not a problem. <laughs> so in, in a matter of 10, 15 minutes conversation, you become part of a segment that then carries and shapes your decisions later on in life in how you perceive yourself and how you possibly show up for others. However, I'm stubborn, and for me, it's like, I, I can make the decision, but I'm not willing to live up with it. So the strengths that that conversation gave me is, I'm going to get the hell out of here as soon as I can. I'm going to find a way and not back to Moldova. <laughs> I'll go to something better. And I'm going to fight for my rights as a woman, and I'm going to negotiate. And this defining moment shaped the rest of conversations I had about my career, about the opportunities that I took on and said yes to, about the people I associated with. I knew that I don't want to hang out with anybody in HR who will even dare to say something like that. Um, so that's a per personal example. And the process through which I went through, right, one is an exclusion that happened, a moment of exclusion. And then the decision that I made at that moment that is something wrong with me about myself and then the reframe that I made in terms of what I want to do to make it right or make it better or different, and the wisdom I get out as a result of it. So I want to run an exercise between the, um, with, with you in the room. So first of all, uh, oh, where is going? <laughs> the wrong direction. First, in pairs. Um, just turn to your neighbor, hopefully you haven't met before, and just have a conversation about what is the difference. <laughs> so shout a few things that um, came out in the conversation. What do you see the difference between inclusion and diversity? And there is another degree where you even know about the dance <laughs> <laughs> that is taking place. Any other comments? No? 
what did you learn about the person next to you? I think um, it's a similar idea, but just to elaborate a little bit more, you know, diversity is really getting diverse employees from an organizational yeah. perspective in the door, um, but the inclusion piece really revolves around culture, and unfortunately that's, I think, one of the biggest challenges that practitioners face, whether they're internal or external to an organization, is yeah. how you really foster that culture where those um, that you got in the door who, you know, are diverse, whether it be, you know, race, gender, um, disability status, something like that, how you make them feel included and really part of the team, and so they have a positive employee experience. And how do you even know what is their own definition of inclusion yes. that they want to belong to? Yeah. Okay, next step. Um, do you have notebooks? And if not, I have a stack of papers here. Okay. Fold it into two. On the left side, think about your life. And this is all personal exercise. You're not to share it with each other or the, the neighbor next to you. Think about moments of exclusion where you really had to make a decision about who you are or how you you're perceived by others, and write it down. I will take two minutes to kind of reflect on that. Yeah, write the decision that you made. That maybe, like in my case, I am an immigrant, therefore I don't belong anywhere. That I'm a woman who doesn't deserve to be better paid. About done? So on the right side, have a column, strength or wisdom that you gained out of that experience, and list as many as you have. So turn back to your partner, or if you don't have, come in threes, and go one at a time and share the wisdoms or the strengths that you've gained with each other. It's okay to Say pass if you don't want to share, but just the strengths. Okay, next, take the piece of paper and tear it along the fold. And then choose what are you going to keep? The decisions you've made? or the wisdoms. And you have four choices. You keep both, you keep one or the other, or throw away both. Raise your hand if you made the decision. And when you're done, I'll give the instructions for the next step. Done? Yep. Not yet? Done. Ball up the papers, both of them. And toss the one that you decided to toss away. You can either give it to me or toss it. <laughs> there you go. We'll collect this later. <laughs> okay. Awesome. This side keeps all of it? What's going on? Okay, so I would love some sharing. Who would like to share what they kept and what they tossed and why you made the decision? I decided to keep both because I think it's totally valuable to look at, to even articulate what we've done and the yeah. learning I gained, but it's important to know uh, also where I came from. And it's not that I compare myself my strengths to others, but it's important to know how far I've come from that, that situation yeah. or that, that um, decision that what's happening. Because it's what formed you to be who you are. And it also reminds you to have empathy for everybody else who may have their own journey. Yep. Anybody else? I also kept that. Kept both, okay. Yeah, I, and agreeing with what you said, it's like, if I make a mistake, I own it and I live by it, but I'm proud of the decisions and not like, wavering back. So that's how that back and shape who I am. Exactly. 
who threw away the, um, the lessons learned or the wisdom? Who kept the, um, just the decisions? Yeah, the luggage, we don't necessarily need to always carry with you. Well, as they come with. So I had the choice to either dump a lot of data and information about the uh, diversity and inclusion com complexities in the workplace, but I decided that you'll get plenty of that probably over the next two days. I don't need to pile more statistics on you. But what I was hoping to do is um, really create an experience where you can think through some of these deciding factors, and then next time you have in the workplace an opportunity to make a decision about the people around you, about the statistics you choose to make um, recommendations on, about um, creating a relationship or forming a connection with somebody next door or next table to you. You keep that in mind. So we have not succeeded at answering all of our questions. Indeed, we feel we have not completely answered any of them. The answers we have found only serve to raise a whole new set of questions. In some ways, we feel we are as confused as ever, but we believe we are confused on a much higher level and about more important things. Hopefully, you'll take the um, notion of inclusion with you into your workplace and think about every single cell in that analysis that you do as a human being who is just as diverse and it needs inclusion as, as any one of us. Thank you.